Pension Board of Trustees regular meeting Thursday, July 12th at 1808. Director Wisniewski, we hand us the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call of members. All members of the pension board are present. Any additions or deletions to the agenda? that I will make is uh, regarding the Melody Mesmer disability pension request. She forwarded an email today stating due to medical reasons she will be unable to attend tonight and would like to have her uh, hearing moved to the next quarterly pension meeting. Without objection from the board, I will go ahead and schedule her for the next quarterly pension meeting. Okay, yep. All right. Uh, any other additions or deletions? Seeing none, we entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> okay, next item will be to review uh, the menu minutes from April 12th. Motion to approve the April 12 regular meeting minutes as presented. So moved. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Take us to our old business. Uh, first item, pension bylaws. Scott. Uh, over the last three months, I did forward to you all what I would call the uh, final working copy of the proposal for the bylaw um, revisions. I didn't have any questions from those, however, I would uh, like to raise the prospects of maybe rather than revising those bylaws at this time, the chief and the administrative officers have been discussing under the banner of recruitment and, retre and retention, the idea of a service awards type of program. That might be something that we want to uh, consider there would be some work to be done in terms of the study of that program, which, by the way, is allowed under Section 12, I believe it is, of the Colorado Revised Statutes related to the pension uh, rules. And what it basically does is allows us to uh, transition people uh, into a new program and perhaps off the old style pension. Lots of districts in the region are doing this. And it's attractive because it provides for an immediate, more immediate payout to people who are contributing to the organization that can be less expensive in the long run because uh, it's really up to the district board to provide a budget for it. And then based on a formula of certifications, of call response, of other contributions to the operations of the organization, people would build up um, credits towards being sharing a part of that pool. And whatever the pool is, is divided at the end of the year. It's completely controllable budget-wise from the organization. It provides for immediate cash payment to the to the participants, uh, and it can be more meaningful in terms of it's money they can use in the near future. They can put in five or ten years worth of service, have something kind of in the bank that's tangible, not have to wait for 10 or 20 years of service and wait until they're 50 years old to get a monthly payout. They might wind up with 10, 12, 15, 20,000 dollars. You can do something with that immediately. House down payment, car purchase, 
pay off the student loan and some other sorts of things. So it's a program that I think might be worth um, looking at, and I don't want to put too much on the table right now, but rather seek uh, questions that you might have about that idea, um, and then maybe commission a study of that to either you know have myself be the point person with the with the chief. Um, we have m many of you may remember presentations in the past. We discussed it under the banner of a 457 type plan, which is the IRS tax section that the program relates to. But uh, it is a way for us to perhaps manage our retention issues and uh, save money at the same time there would be complications. But it might be worth looking at. And uh, I, without having Mr. Cole to advise us fully on this. Just walk in. Yeah. He's there, it's a good time. <laughs> And I think Bob would support me. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, we're having a discussion of the pension bylaws and whether we should uh, seek to make an adoption presently or should we continue to live under the old bylaws, which are not compliant with, with uh, state law at the moment, but I think we're compelled to act under state law anyway. And you should, are. We, should we, could we look at a LOSAP type program, which is allowable under Section 12 of the pension rules? possibly as a supplement to or a transition to a new type of program. And could we, should we wait another three months before we have looked at adopting new pension bylaws and instead investigate the possibilities of another program? Uh, you're confined to the state law, so to the extent your existing bylaws have inconsistencies with state law, you gotta follow state law. Uh, that makes it a little confusing, perhaps, but, but it's it, it, when you're looking through the bylaws, but, uh, but that's why you have to follow. So, uh, you know, we've been trying to get these new bylaws adopted for probably five, six, seven years. <laughs> uh, so in that regard, three more months doesn't hurt, I don't think. On the other hand, if that was to allow it to go on for another year, uh, you know, I'd rather have what what we've been working with so far in place than to go a whole year before you get something done. So it's really kind of how committed are you to getting getting it completed? If it's three months, I'd say okay. If, if, if that ends up looking like it's going to stretch into another year, you know, get it in place and, and then work with it. And frankly, there are very few differences between what we have now and the. Uh, the revised version, and all of what I said aside, I have no problem with adopting the new bylaws I don't, because it doesn't cause a substantial change. It's just that if we decided to institute a low set type program, it would be another revision to incorporate that into those bylaws. So, would these payments accrue like a uh, contributory retirement plan? I believe they are, and they would be vested. They're held and vested in a plan. Vested immediately. So that if a person leaves the department, it would be like moving out of a 401k. You basically cash them out. You cash them out. But it, it, and it would be a tax, pre-tax contribution. Uh, the contribution and the earnings, I believe, are tax-free. I believe it's taxable on distribution. On distribution, like any other <coughs> 401k. <coughs> and just like a pension payment. We lose matching funds from the state. I don't know that there's a provision for matching on the low set. Uh, I, I, I agree. I don't think there is. I mean, confirm that. I don't think there is, but I don't. I also believe that it doesn't uh, do anything related <coughs> to receiving your pension, uh, your matching funds on just regular pension fund. To the extent that we continue to make those contributions, and that's yes. one of the sticky points. That, yeah. If you need to, you need an actuarial study to know what to contribute to the new program, but you also have an, a substantial actuarial change in terms of you're potentially not adding members to it. You're now in maintenance mode for the people that you grandfather under that program, and it has a now limited life. It will continue to exist for the benefit of the current um, eligible persons, and we would have to decide who to grandfather under that and who to compel to put under the new program. So there could be some financial constraints in making the transition. It might be that in the early years there's not very many dollars to set aside for the low staff because you're still having to fund the regular pension. But these are the things that need to be looked at and put some numbers on. What's your feelings as far as timelines about the possibility of us being able to include the low set and hopefully pass something in three months? 
it might actually wind up being that budgetary concern. I don't think structuring a program would be difficult because I think there would be examples to follow from around the region. Um, and I'm sure Bob could help with the words for how to develop and how to memorialize such a program. So the, I guess the question would be, can you have a program for us to look at by the next pension board meeting that would be an example of how this would work? Joe promised I could drop his name in the context of this conversation. He has a presentation that he's made before okay. that we could spiff up and we could either give it to the pension board or we could email it for your perusal. Ahead of time. That would or be said, put it in front of the committee. <coughs> Jim. Would the FEPA continue to administer those funds? I would guess so. They had that. I think they do. Yes. What does Lowe's have to say? Length of Service Awards Program. It sounds compelling to see it. Uh, well, I just worry about making dual contributions. In other words, if we're required to make X contributions, then are we going to wind up making double the contributions? That Two programs. A, that would be a board decision. <coughs> The richness of the LOSAT program would be entirely a board decision based on financial capability. You could set aside $100, you could set aside a several thousand. Mm -hmm. It's simply that once the pool is established, the firefighters earn that portion of it by their contribution um, kind of in that shorter term. But the payout depends on what the board sets aside so that each year, each year to the fund. Absolutely. So, and, and it really is an annual decision. And therefore, there's some uncertainty with regard to the participants as to how much, because they're not guaranteed a level, a level contribution. True. And they're not guaranteed a level, neither a level contribution nor a level benefit. Correct. There's risk on both sides. Will you be able to get that together and get it to us? in a timely fashion before the next pension board meeting to where we can make an educated, more educated decision? Yes. Okay. Good. Is the board good with that direction? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so just, we'll hold off now on bylaws and wait to put that together, get it to us, and we can make a better decision with the next pension board meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Take us to our next hearing for a pension request from Robert Lakeda. Do we have documents? Um, we do. I've got the summary um, that uh, I um, provided uh, actually two months ago, but we didn't have uh, we had not had time to set up a uh, hearing on that. Uh, in reviewing uh, Mr. Lakeda's file, he had uh, joined. Uh, the department in 1977 uh, and he left at the end of 1989 uh, which was 12 years and five months uh, and there were uh, pension letters in his file for all except for three of those years However, uh, in looking uh, there were uh, we were unable to find any pension uh, letters for that time period um, essentially there no records uh, retained for any uh, members of the department in that in that time period, and I think that uh, you know there was no indication that uh, Mr. Lakata had a break in service there, um, and all the indication, and in fact, uh, uh, his uh, you know uh, credit letters uh, from you know 1984 forward were consistent with having completed service during those three years. Uh, so um, it, it would be my recommendation that uh, he would be awarded a pension based on the 12 years and five months uh, that are, are indicated there. Did you happen to contact him about those years or have you spoken to her? I did and he said that, uh, that you know, he, had, uh, he had remained a member during that entire period. from the board. I'm just curious if there's anybody uh, retiree or something that could verify any of that. Just verify that he was... I don't know who would be, who would be around that would... Ed? Ed 
Mike, uh, Russ, we could call Russ. I remember the Licata family when I came, and they were, they were around, but I couldn't tell you if uh, he made all those years. He left right before I came. So the documentation shows a minimum of nine years, five months. Of the, am I correct in saying he would not be eligible for a pension? Correct. You have to have a minimum of 10. You have to have a minimum of 10. Has he submitted any other documentation or made any other representations other than his request? Uh, he, you know, other than his statement that he was here, uh, he did not have any, any other documentation. Say the onus was on us if there's no records found for three years. And that I think is the you know kind of the the issue. The way I see it is that uh, you know there, there were no records of any kind uh, for the, those several years there. So for other uh, people as well, for anybody in the department, so, you know, we were just simply missing several years of files. Uh, it's hard to say uh, what might have happened to those, but. Uh, that's pretty significant there in the back there are none. That kind of changes things. No, no records at all for any of them, sorry. No, not at all. Do we, have, do we have other well, people? Well, if it was just records on everybody else but not him, that would be different. Records on no one leads me to believe that he's probably correct. Yeah, and we were we were unable to find any other any other records of any kind for the department during that time period. So uh, I think that, uh, that probably just was a record retention issue uh, rather than, uh, you know, as I mentioned, um, the 1984, you know, indicated that he had, you know, all of the years prior to that. And I would say that that's probably a good enough piece of, of evidence that uh, you know, he was, in fact, uh, you know, with the department during I would move to give Mr. Lakata the 12 years, five months credit. I would second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Do you need to specify the amount? I believe you do. You do need to specify the amount of the pension that you'll be awarded to Mr. Lakata. So we calculate it. We don't count the months though, right? It's full years only. It would be full years, so that and that would be, be two hundred and forty dollars at uh, twelve years credit. So yeah. Okay. So it's twenty dollars each additional year. I believe so. Or yes. ten ten up to a maximum of four hundred for twenty years Thank you. Okay. So are are we gonna concur that it's two hundred and forty dollars a month? Wait a second, we're getting the official. Yeah, they made addendums to go to 30 years where you adjusted up to 30. Is that what it was? Yeah, you never we've always done a $20 per rate. It's a percentage, yeah, up to the 20 year, which is 400, I believe, right? Is that what I have? Yes. For 20, so. I just remember there was a change in there somewhere. I think it's when we went up mm -hmm. to 400 many years ago. You probably So 12.5 years is 250. Well, what's our, do we have a, what is our policy? What do your bylaws say? Yeah, I mean, that's the issue. That's, that's why we need to get the bylaws and the document. Uh, because, because I believe our new one's prorated. That's why I'm drawing a blank. I happen to have a copy of this. The question is, 
because the pressure is going to climb. Take your time, Scott. Go. All the examples are done in four years. Why don't we why don't we adopt it for a year? And if we discover that there's a need to change, we can we can amend to the future meeting. Sounds good to me. So the motion will read. 12 years of service, $240 a month. Everyone in favor of that? Yep. Yes. All right. Close that item. That will take us to new business. Any other new business for the pension board? Can I have a motion? What's that? Can I have a motion? Not necessarily. Okay. Any, any other business to be brought before the board? Not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn the pension board meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 1829. We'll take uh, five minutes and then we'll uh, begin the regular session. If there's anything you did to find it out before, we'll meet us again in the pledge of allegiance. Come on. Thank you. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let's show that all board members are present. Uh, any additions or deletions to the agenda? to approve the June 14th meetings as minutes as presented. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Passed. That will take us to financial matters and treasurer's report. <coughs> you have uh, in your packet the uh, detailed summary of the revenues and expenditures for May and June. I think the May statement was revised in that way. So you have the uh, you have both those uh, in front of you. Um, I noted that certain expense items there are certain expenses on here that are reimbursable under the service. So we will show them as an expense, and then we will show the, the reimbursement of the revenue. Uh, 
Right. Uh, what we have, you know, one of the one of the issues that we have with the way that we're doing the budget is that uh, we don't have those broken out uh, so that there's a separate fund that addresses, you know, reimbursed money. So, for example, it shows that we've got uh, about twenty-six thousand dollars excess in overtime mm -hmm. over our budget, but all of that uh, fund uh, is that twenty-six thousand essentially is is all. Uh, participation or assistance that we provided to other departments and other wildfires. Are there other repairs and other things that we can hear that what can there there are and uh, what we're hoping to do is as we get caught up a little bit on uh, on the um, kind of the bills for that uh, that we'll be able to actually address that whole uh, program and where you know what uh, you know, what we've paid out and what uh, has been reimbursed so that we can see that all as a separate right. budget. Um, we have had some discussions, uh, I've had some discussions with the Chief and with Bree about our chart of accounts. I've also had discussions with the auditor, which we can talk about in the audit report. And uh, <coughs> subject to time constraints and other uh, technology issues that we're dealing with, uh, I think we are going to explore revising our chart of accounts better reflect and to better communicate what our revenues are in each category, uh, what our expenditures are, and to try and, uh, I think the Chief has recommended, we've talked about putting together a, a program budget which will tell us more about how much we're spending on each kind of activity that we're doing, and less on really just sort of these line item kinds of things, but uh, that is going to be the process. Uh, you have the finance report of June 2012 in front of you. Uh, I will not read the income and the checking account. You can read that for yourself. But I do would like uh, uh, to make a motion that uh, total expenses of $141,740 for the month of June be approved. So moved. Second. All, All, in, good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I think that's the, that's the answer. Just the audit. That's under the um, business. Any uh, financial audit questions? Good. Good. Here, that will take us to the fire chief's report. Okay. Um, As, uh, as we've been discussing, uh, you know, I'd like to address, uh, you know, looking at our level of service and, and how we, you know, analyze how well we're doing and providing service to the bomber. Uh, with that, um, you know, uh, I think that uh, we are going to need to sit down, you know, and basically kind of address uh, what it is that we want to uh, be measuring what it is we want to uh, essentially kind of defining uh, what our, our service uh, that we'll be providing is. And um, I had a discussion with Alec earlier today about, uh, you know, basically, you know, what we need to do is, uh, you know, sit down and address our mission and what it is that we're going to try to provide to the public and, and really base our uh, decisions on that rather than simply doing business because you know, that's what we do. So uh, we're we're going to need to really kind of look at that and then set up some uh, you know kind of basic uh, measures and they don't have to be very you know, very specific or very detailed but just a general idea of what it is that uh, you know we want to address and be able to, to uh, analyze what we're doing. So with that, uh, I would recommend that the board you know set up a work session so that we can discuss that. I did uh, send to you all, uh, you know, an example of what uh, what I did with my last department, which is probably a little, you know, a little more detailed than we're going to be able to do, at least initially here, uh, because you know, again, as I've mentioned, uh, 
we don't have quite the, the level of reporting and uh, kind of the documentation that uh, that we built up over a number of years there about you know how quickly we were able to get to calls, how many people got there, uh, things like you know how fast it takes us to get to a second call if we're already out on one, which is you know an issue that we want to look at in terms of determining whether or not we're providing an adequate service to the public. So, so those things are going to again take some time, but we'll want to sit down and, and decide which you know what measures and what. Uh, what services we want to be looking at. Okay. Uh, moving on to some of the issues uh, with the department. Um, first off, we're, we're in the middle of grant season and uh, we've gotten uh, four grant applications submitted. Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned uh, last month, we did receive one grant, uh, which was for our, the wildland equipment, which was one of the smaller ones that we've been looking at. Uh, the current um, uh, grants that are out right now are, are kind of larger grants, and uh, it'll be a while before we uh, we hear about those. Uh, I did put in for replacing uh, engine 433, which of course is 23 years old at this point. Uh, it's beyond its service life, and, uh, and it's uh, it shows it. It's, uh, it's over in the shop more often than it's on the call, so uh, it's uh, it's time. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, if we don't get that grant, uh, it's, it's going to be uh, probably fairly difficult for us to, uh, to fund replacing that otherwise. Um, the, uh, the other one that I think that we have a really solid um, uh, shot at is, is uh, the mitigation grant. And what we're going to be asking for in that, it's a 50% matching grant, but uh, it does not require that the 50% be uh, be made by the department. So uh, all it says is that it's a 50% non-federal matching grant. And one of the allowable programs for that is that we could fund mitigation projects in communities if the community would, would pick up the other half of it. So in other words, if they wanted to hire a chipper, you know, we could use 50% matching grant, you know, to cut their cost on, on doing that. Uh, and that, uh, that is a grant that I think that we have a, a very good chance of, of getting, but we won't hear about it, unfortunately, until into probably late fall. So that would be a grant that would be available for next season rather than this season. But that's not through the state. That's not a WUI grant. It's a WUI grant, but it's federal funds. Federal. Uh, and it, it uh, is administered through the state forestry. Uh, that's who we put the application in through, but the uh, funding actually comes uh, from the uh, federal government. Um, an update, uh, we're still having issues with, uh, with the computer system, we've been making that uh, transition over, unfortunately we had um, more issues today and we don't have access to accounting right now and a few other things, so uh, we've got all the pieces in place, but uh, we're going to start making that, uh, that switch uh, here in the next few days. Uh, the personnel manual is going to it's been delayed a little bit further. Obviously, we've got a lot of other stuff going on, so we're going to um, we're going to uh, you know need to continue working on that. And of course, uh, the discussions that uh, that uh, Scott brought up at the meet at the pension meeting about different reward systems are going to be things that we're going to want to get uh, you know uh, addressed in that personnel manual as well. So uh, I think that we've got some not just uh, language issues that you know in terms of revising this but also you know some pretty substantial changes that we may want to look at uh, in terms of our um, personnel policies particularly with regards to the volunteers um, we have uh, been working uh, with uh, the systems design a company out of Kitsap Washington on the ambulance building and uh, we have um, you know, gotten, gotten an agreement <coughs> with them that uh, currently reviewing. Uh, we anticipate that that, uh, that will uh, be um, something that we'll want to go ahead with. Uh, that um, billing service again uh, is a, um, it leaves all of the decisions about collections to the department. Uh, they basically handle uh, the management of submitting claims and processing them. And, uh, they do that at a cost of $22 a call, which is much more reasonable than 
you know, the majority of Angel's billing services that work on a percentage basis uh, and work based off of collections. So uh, I think that uh, you know, that pending uh, review of uh, agreement, we're going to uh, want to go ahead with that uh, billing agreement. Some of the operational things, we had several things that uh, we addressed as concerns coming up after the Lower North Florida fire. Uh, we have gotten um, the communications equipment has all uh, been purchased and placed in service, so we've got the ability now to communicate with uh, virtually all of our mutual aid partners. Um, the one uh, department that we would still have an issue with, the only one in the area, would be Evergreen Fire, and they are currently making a transition from the UHF over to the VHF. So between VHF and 800, we should be able to actually talk to everybody here. Uh, we're working alongside on fires now, which will be a nice uh, change over what we had. Uh, mutual aid group between the quarter chiefs is continuing to move ahead, and uh, uh, we have gone ahead and um, basically come to a, a verbal agreement that uh, we'll send resources automatically on any wildfires uh, up and down the corridor, um, and uh, that should speed up the response and increase the response available. Uh, for wildfires, and uh, we're also looking at how to standardize that in the computer-aided uh, dispatching so that uh, what we'd like to have is that areas like we've got uh, the Sphinx Park area down on uh, South Elk Creek. Uh, that area is actually much closer to uh, North Fork uh, Fire District Station than it is to any of ours. It's about uh, seven and a half miles from here to the Bucks Nord Saloon, and it's about a mile and a half from their station. Well, it would obviously make sense if uh, we get calls in that area that they automatically be dispatched as well. Uh, we have called them out as uh, mutual aid assistance uh, on calls, um, you know, in that area. But uh, you know, speeding that up by having it uh, implemented at the dispatch level makes a lot more sense. So we're we're working on how to implement that with uh, with the dispatchers now. Uh, mobilization. Obviously, we've had uh, you know Colorado's uh, seen more fire this season than in, uh, already in, in any season in the, in the past. Uh, we uh, had um, quite a bit of assistance uh, when we had the Lower North Fork fire here, and in return, we've been providing assistance to the other departments uh, around the state. Um, you know, when when they've gotten tapped out uh, uh, in the in the past, that's. Um, been actually beneficial both for the departments that uh, are receiving that assistance and also for us in that you know our personnel come back uh, with much more experience uh, and uh, you know, much better appreciation of how to uh, fight wildfires uh, than they'll get you know in one day on a, on a big fire like that you can get as much experience as you will in four or five years of going to a, you know smaller fires than you normally see so it's uh, it's been a, a good a good program for us in a number of ways. <clears throat> the, the what we've learned from some of those has already been implemented on our, on our brush trucks. Uh, we've made some improvements on, on how those operate, and, and uh, we we'll actually uh, should be able to uh, really I'd say be able to deal with about <coughs> double the size of fires that we were able to a few months ago just by making. A few procedural changes and, and some equipment changes on those on those rigs. Uh, the bigger pro the biggest project that we identified from that Lower and North Fork fire was the uh, mapping, and that continues to be uh, an issue. We had uh, an incident a little while ago where our map books, actually a couple of them recently, where our map books didn't send us to the right places, um, and uh, we're we're going to have to uh, continue to. Probably uh, the best thing that uh, is going to be to uh, actually hire someone from the outside to actually do the work for us on that, uh, on those map books. But it does require that we uh, kind of get some of the preliminary work done of uh, uh, ground truthing the information that's in there. So identifying where all the water cisterns are and such. That work was done. Uh, once before by the department under a grant, uh, and a lot of work was done, and nobody knows where all of the data went. Uh, it, uh, it has been, uh, unfortunately, we have, uh, it 
it's another issue that we've had with uh, inadequate record retention or uh, you know management of data, the management of the computer system in the, in the past. So, who administered the grant? Uh, it was um, Melody Mesmer was was in charge of that. I mean, where did we have the grant from? The grant, federal or state? That was a federal grant. And if you Can recall, we get the data we submitted? Back to well, them? all we submitted was like a final report on that. Um, so they didn't. They didn't require us to uh, give them the data. Uh, it was just a report saying that we had we had completed that work. Uh, so I, I, you know, we're going to keep trying to find it. Some it got raffled somewhere around, or it's on some computer that got stuck in a closet somewhere, or something. But uh, in the interim, you know, we got to look at, at how to, how would we can move ahead if we don't find it. Um, then uh, you know the last thing uh, we've got uh, under the you know, volunteer recruitment program. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we're we're looking to move away from kind of having a one size fits all. You know, you join the department and you know you, you have to do everything. Uh, and, and to a program where we can recruit more volunteers from the community that uh, uh, would be interested in, for example, only serving as uh, an EMT on the ambulance or, or doing other uh, parts of the job. So with that, we're going to be starting a recruitment program uh, to start recruiting uh, for the first responder program, which is you know an entry level position for uh, the ambulance service. And, uh, and that's going to be our next uh, big focus. And that's going to be primarily, we're going to be looking at uh, in-district volunteers for that. Because really, what we're looking at are people that can, uh, you know, come out and either drive the ambulance, assist the EMTs and paramedics, uh, or you know, potentially be the first uh, first person who's on scene of uh, of medical incidents in their neighborhood. So that uh, that program is starting up um, here. Uh, we're we're going to be starting the recruiting uh, within the next uh, month uh, for a program you know, class that will be starting. In I consider um, rapid deliberation on the level of service. I think that's a high priority task. And I'm wondering, uh, uh, is there any provision in the law for, let's say, like a board retreat or deliberation um, and brainstorming? Or it would does, be, do we have to have executive session? Well, it would be in the context of a work session. Uh, Public meeting, you have to give notice uh, to allow the public to come in or witness it if they want. But yes, you can, you can have a retreat type format. Uh, if there's any topic that you uh, could legally convene in the executive session, then you need to reformat or recharacterize it as a special meeting uh, and take minutes. A work session, if you're not going to take any action, you don't have to. If you're going to take action, you have to take action to go into an executive session, then you have to take minutes uh, and meet all the notice requirements. Uh, but it's, it's truly a kind of a brainstorming work session, mm -hmm. um, then uh, you know, you join us in this work session and uh, go back to business, have it kind of less formal, but it still is open to the public. I'd like to ask my colleagues, um, there could either be two directors with the chief. Um, in several sessions, um, and then reporting to the board, or the entire board could maybe have a two to three hour retreat to try to formulate um, some conclusions. My feeling is, number one, it's, it's been a high priority since North Fork, but in light of what's going on, I really think that uh, once we make that decision, uh, approaching the public sooner than later, uh, given what's our fire system would be advantageous to perhaps meeting our there and our needs. It was like a lot of the fire chief search stuff we did in a public format just because we wanted to be more transparent. So I don't think we have a problem with doing that. And I don't think, I don't imagine anything would come up in there that would require the executive to take a session. Yeah, you usually kind of set your work session. Uh, 
tree agenda beforehand and, and, and look it through and figure out. Then Most of the time you don't, right. but now and then there's something that kind of proves that you know, no maybe how you will. Okay. Well, I'll work with the chief to find out what the agenda will be, <coughs> and then we'll make a decision on two directors and a committee or a public. Great. Thank you. That's on you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Hey, Bill, quick question. So um, we have, I know, learned a lot uh, from the Lower North Fork Fire, but we continue to have, obviously, a lot of exposure. You talked about the, the map books, but we also had talked about mapping software. Right. Is, is that still, you know, um, something you're, you're strongly considering as well? Yes, uh, what we would do is uh, essentially <coughs> put the, um, you know, build the maps in, in the software program and then provide, uh, when I say map books, I'm referring to both the electronic version of it as well as the okay. paper version. Um, we want to have both available. The electronic version obviously uh, is a lot more searchable and uh, would let us uh, make uh, corrections. Uh, you know, and then the paper versions are obviously what we need for when we're out in the field um, because we have limited amount of uh, ability to you know access uh, yeah. computer information while we're out there. Okay. Weren't we trying to take uh, money earned from that fire towards right. those kind of investments? That's correct, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, it's been, um, you know, we've gotten uh, most of those item, items that we've addressed, the, the replacement radios, uh, fire shelters, uh, you know, some of the other equipment needs that we had, those are those are taken care of. Now the mapping is the, the other big one. Okay. So we would have to, <coughs> Once we get that together, we will have to modify our budget to. to we're going to kind of have to do a budget amendment at some point. Uh, you know, at this point, with the amount of uh, of uh, fires that we've uh, assisted in, um, we've brought in, I believe, about roughly two hundred thousand dollars and spent roughly a hundred thousand um, dollars. But you know, those figures are very rough at this point. So we're going to have to address all of those in terms of. Again, you know, making those budget amendments and, and uh, making a decision on what we're going to do. You know, fortunately, you know, the, the personnel pretty much is a wash uh, when we send folks out. You know, they pay for their time, uh, but they also pay us for the use of the uh, of the equipment that we send out, and um, and that does net the department money that we want to roll back in to be better prepared uh, for our own fires here. Citizens issues. Any citizens issues before the board tonight? Old business, I don't have any. Do you want to have any board papers? Uh, okay. We'll, the next item on old business will be the board vacancy. We had two candidates uh, submit a uh, request uh, <coughs> to be interviewed. Um, I believe both of them are here tonight. Is there a Gary Barrett here? You want to come forward and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Why you're interested in getting on board? Stay in the middle of the river. Uh, Where are you comfortable enough. with? That's fine. That's, That's good, good enough. enough. Well, let's see. I bought a house in Kings Valley in 1979. And I've had it ever since. So, kind of a long term thing. Uh, I made a career out of the Navy, though, so they took me out of the valley on a fairly regular basis. Worked for Continental Airlines for a couple of years out of Denver State. That'll give you a clue about how long I've been out there. And I ran a satellite management office in Colorado Springs, so I got tired of that. Working for the Air Force was kind of hard if you used to be Navy. Uh, but no, I was just talking with some friends the other day, and they said there was a vacancy up here at Elk Creek, and I figured, well, there's something I could do to help the community as opposed to just sit and wait for everybody to show up. Because I know I, I'm still kind of grateful for the EMTs. My wife had a heart problem, and you guys showed up pronto, so no complaints there. I figured I owed something. And if I can help, I will. Uh, 
I used to be the director of naval communications. I had all the Navy's comm budgets. I had a billion dollar budget. I dealt with the frickin' government day in and day out until I couldn't stand it. Uh, I have managed the Air Force GPS satellite system, so I'm kind of familiar with your mapping, charting, and geodesy programs. Uh, gosh, I don't know what else I put in there. Sort of jack of all trades, master of none. The Navy trained me in firefighting. Of course, that was on ships where you didn't want your house to sink. And the other was aircraft firefighting, but I've never messed around with structures or wildland fires either. Um, I'm a native of Colorado, grew up here, kind of familiar with fires in the woods. So nothing new there. I was always <coughs> happy to see Elk Creek doing well. But uh, I thought perhaps I could throw my hat in the ring here and maybe help out a little bit. If there's any more background you need, I mean, I'm happy to discuss that. But as the Board of Directors business goes, I sat on the military equivalent of the Board of Directors in NATO for two years. And that was a military civil job, so I'm familiar with the other side of the fence too. Uh, but that kind of would round it up. Been retired, <clears throat> don't do much, fish, stopped hunting too hard, still hike, bike, run around the neighborhood a lot. Uh, other than that, I had pretty much spare time, except when I have the occasional chance to, I'm on a boat delivery crew and I'm a navigator, so sometimes I'm gone for three or four weeks at a shot. But other than that, I'm home. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what do you see the role of the board at the Elkins Fire Department? Well, I just got here, but it sounds to me like your chief here has got some visions that are just taking shape, trying to put them together. And in some cases, what a guy like that needs is somebody to run interference as opposed to somebody to be interference. <laughs> <laughs> now, how much that can be done and who you talk to and, uh, and who knows who in the neighborhood around here has a lot to do with that. But after you sign on with the man's plan, then the job is to help him. Very well said. Thank you. If we agree. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, with your training and experience, what do you think you would bring to the board? Uh, well, I'd have to go back. You're, you're just on the, on the cusp of starting measures of effectiveness, assessing, you know, from a mission statement, I suppose, what you expect from everyone that works here, what the goals are, and, you know, how, if you got the goals, but the plan, the hard part is to get from A to B, you know, to start to get there. Uh, I've had some experience doing that in the communications world where the Navy went from Stone Age to modern electronics in the course of about five years. <clears throat> and it's not exactly the same, but if you pick your MOEs and you have the valid way to measure them and you trust your measurements, then you can usually close that loop down and I don't know what the word for it lately is. It used to be total quality management, or before that, the Japanese had a good word for it, TQM. Mm -hmm. But if you nick away at it, you can get there. And I've seen it work in other organizations, and it sounds to me like that's, that's an ideal place to start if, it, if that's where you're going to go. And your suggestion to uh, get a small group together, I heartily recommend because the more people you stick in the group, the less actually you're going to get done on agreeing where your goals and your mission statement goes. So although I'm not there now, I would say stick with your original suggestion of about two people and the chief. Have a huddle. If it's public, okay, it's public. That's great. That's not a problem. I mean, this is a public service organization, so they ought to be able to listen. 
But choosing your goals carefully there, I, I found you get what you expect and you get what you measure. And so there you are. If you set that up right, I think you're going to get where you want to go. Now, how much of this, as I said, requires run interference or getting help from the state or the feds? I'm not familiar with that. Thank you. Yeah. One, one quick question, Gary. So from your perspective, having lived here as long as you have, um, you've heard us talk a little bit tonight about some uh, areas where we're deficient, we have exposure. Sure. Uh, we're, we're not serving the community as best as we could, but uh, it likely will require some <coughs> form of investment, whether it's through grants or, or however we choose to do it. How would you, uh, how would you see that? How, do you, how would you view it? Well, as I say, I, I'm not familiar with what grants are available, but I know that the Fed's ideas are obviously going to have changed because of the politics involved and a couple of big burns in the neighborhood here. Uh, so I would expect there would be more federal funds available via one source or another, and it might even be through either the Congress or the Senate. You know, I used to hit on them for money. <laughs> but... Uh, Local, Colorado state government is also, I think, probably predisposed to put a little more funding into wildfire management of one form or another. Uh, having dealt with the money and the money people before, they don't want to pay much attention to you unless you go in with an airtight plan. And so step one goes back to the airtight plan getting put together still requires about two people and a chief to sit down and say, here's where we want to go. Here's where our shortfalls are. Here's what we need to address. Line that up in a priority system and then say, okay, now, if there's any money available, let's go for item one first. You know, when you get that one killed off, then okay, then down to number two on the list. If there's any windfall profits or something floats in, in the meantime, great. Then you, know, you can strike that off the list of things we'd like to see. Uh, I don't know that there's been a lessons learned thing. Sometimes there are, and sometimes there aren't. If it's, a, if it's a good organization, somebody kept score and said, you know, we shouldn't ever do this again, and that worked really well. Or we don't want to do this again because the following things don't work, the following things need work, the following things need equipment, personnel, manning, training, whatever the problem happens to be. But if you can get to the people that have the money and you have a good case and, and they're convinced you know what you're talking about, I think you can get funding for a lot of projects. I have another question. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, um, at Elk Creek, and I've only been through one of them, but <clears throat> in the past there have been a number of attempts to um, ask the community for more financial support. Um, you've been here through, I guess, some of those. Quite a few. Uh, these have been all turned down for one reason or another. Um, what do you think the problem is if there is a problem? Do you think that uh, the community here is, if we can present a case, um, talk about our level of service and so forth, uh, how would you feel about going to the community and saying, here's what we're able to do, um, here's what we think is needed, are you willing to pay for this level of service? I'd have to go out on a limb on this one. I would say one is there certainly isn't as much money on this side of the hill as there is over there toward the evergreen side of the hill. And that the people that live here used to be, still are I think to a large extent, either retired on fixed income or, well the construction work is in the toilet. So there's a lot of folks that don't have any money. They're just hand to mouth. And they're making it meet every day. Uh, not a whole lot of folks leave the area right around here and drive down to Denver every day for a nine to five. -er. So I think it takes probably more than average. Um, trust me won't work, you know, believe me might, and here's why, but it would take a lot more interface at a personal level with the community to convince the folks I know around here that I don't know how you want to do it, mill levy bond issue, you know, one time, one off, uh, you have to have a good case. And I just, I've never seen the good case presented 
I've seen a piece of paper come in the mail that said, you know, you ought to pay us more money because we can do a lot of good stuff with it. Well, a lot of people can do a lot of good stuff with it, but there's a, there's a personal issue that has to be addressed around here. I think that community is still alive around here where it was still face-to-face -face not too many years ago. And everybody knew pretty much everybody. So once you got them convinced, I think the folks would do it. The water district over here just got a new sewer plant. They got a bond issue voted in. But I think it's largely because Kings Valley said, you know, I know the folks on the board. I trust them. They're telling me it doesn't work, and they're telling me they need some money to fix it. And before that, there was a bond issue voted in the same way to improve the water system. And that was to mitigate the uranium in the water. Because the EPA changed the rules, and suddenly the water we drank for 20 years was no good. So we had to fix it. Um, I think it, it pretty well has to go the same way. You gents have got a really good case, and you can say this is exactly what we want to do. Here's why we want to do it, and here's what you get back. Here's what your money buys. I think you can sell it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Stan Fox? Yes, that would be me. Uh, Gary, we are both Navy veterans. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I retired. You put an oar on your shoulder and you walked in until somebody asked you what it was and you said, I'll well, in, here. In, <laughs> my, in, in my case, uh, that really wasn't necessary because the biggest thing I ever sailed in the Navy was what we called an LMD, a little metal desk. Yep. And, <laughs> and unfortunately, I, I never got to see in my 20 plus years on active duty. Oh, you did I, No, no, no. It, it, I was a clinical psychologist and a hospital administrator. So I spent most of my time in either hospitals or duty stations where there were a lot of Marines. So I learned how to deal with a certain type of mentality. Uh, it me. What's wrong with Marines? I, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sorry, Mr. Hart, I never meant to insult you. Some of my, uh, you know the old saying, some of my best friends are Marines. But, and, that is absolutely, and that is absolutely true. The best times I ever had were with uh, Marines. That having been said, I am not a Colorado native, but I did get here as fast as I possibly could, which was 18 years ago. And I have been out of the Navy, unfortunately, a lot longer than I was ever in. And uh, since that time, I have operated a one-man show that recruits physicians for medical groups and hospitals. And if you've ever worked with physicians, Dr. Wisniewski, notwithstanding, they are a unique breed of human beings. And my prior experience serving on a board, the board of directors for ECFPD gave me the same impression that first responders, firefighters, are an extraordinary group of people. And they, they are willing to put their lives on the line. And for that, I have the ultimate amount of respect for them. That having been said, at the present time, some of you may know that I'm currently the president of the, or the chairman of the board of the Conifer Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm on the board of Stage Door Theater. I was previously president of the board of directors for, pre, for Beaver Ranch. And I can't remember all, what, what all else. I have a lot of board experience. So I know how, I have a fairly decent idea of how boards work. And I have an understanding, having lived here not quite as long as Gary, but a long time, I have seen a lot of changes take place in the structure and the function of this department. And I am thrilled to see the changes, the positive changes that have been made over the past several years. Uh, I think the, the department is headed in the right direction. I am fully on board with the concept of getting the community on board with the determination as to what the level of service should be for, for us. I'm aware of the fact that most of our, our calls in the department are ambulance calls, but still the specter of wildland fire always looms 
over our heads, and we have to keep <coughs> constantly uh, abreast of those issues. And we have to make sure that this department will meet the needs of this community. So an answer to the question that I probably anticipate from you, uh, Alec, is what will the, what is the function of the board? And I agree, the function of the board is not operational, not, a, not one bit should it interfere with what the chief does. But to run interference, to provide oversight, budget oversight, to try and, and get the community involved in what it is that the department is doing and what it needs, and try and advance <coughs> the level of service that the, that the community needs. So with that, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Hey, Stan, real quick. In yes. the letter that you wrote, you talked about obligations to the community. I'm wondering if you could expound on that a little bit. Well, in terms of what the department does? Yeah. Yes. Well, I, absolutely. The, 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 there, I think it's a two-way street, Greg. Uh, I think the department has an obligation to the community. It holds itself out as, um, how shall I put this, uh, a savior, maybe too strong of a word, but it, in, in many cases would be. Uh, if, if uh, <laughs> I hate to use myself as an example, but in the be <laughs> beginning of March, I had an unfortunate incident in my home, and the EMTs responded, and from what I can remember, the certain level of service was amazing. Um, so the department provides that service. Uh, and that's an obligation. I mean, uh, if, if we're going to be here, if we're going to do this job, then we have an obligation to the community to do the best possible job we can, we can do. On the other hand, it, as I said, it's a two-way street. The community has an obligation to support the department. And we have to make sure that the community understands what it takes to run this department. There are too many people up here who have absolutely no idea what happens. All they know is that they call 911 and boom, there is, there are first responders there, there are fire trucks, there's, there are EMTs, there are paramedics, there are people that know what they're doing. But it doesn't happen by magic. None of this happens by magic. It happens because this department knows that it has an obligation to train hard, to work hard, to, to uh, take their jobs seriously. And that's one of the things that's impressed me over the last couple of years as I've watched what, from the sidelines what's happened to this department. The, the, the dissension, I think, that I, that I used to see is gone. This is a unified department. Uh, there's no, as far as I can tell, there's no squabbling between paid staff and volunteer staff. Everybody is a member of ECFPD, and everybody understands the mission. And that's the obligation. The obligation is to the community. On the other hand, the community has an obligation to respond to what the department's needs are. We can't sit back and say, oh, they'll, they'll be here. They'll always be here. That's not true. Why do you want to get back on the board? I love a challenge, Alec. <laughs> <laughs> they asked me that. They asked me that. I said I was out of the room at the time. <laughs> my, you know, it sounds like a question my wife asked me. The other. Don't you have enough to do? Well, you know, I could sit back and let somebody else do it. And if, and if Gary is the one who does it, I know it would be in good hands. But I love to participate. I don't... I, I, the first thing that I got involved in here was even before the high school started. I was part of the booster club. The high school hadn't even opened yet. But I came to Conifer. This was going to be my home. And I have an obligation to this community to make sure that the place my kids grew up in and the place where Patty and I live is going to be the best possible place it can, it can be. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been over to Beaver Ranch recently, but there's a lot of stuff that wasn't there before, and it's here now, and it's a much better place. The uh, Chamber of Commerce is 
if you've never been to a, a Chamber of Commerce breakfast, come to the one tomorrow morning. It's a functioning entity with about 70 people who show up for, for breakfast. I love being part of that. And I love being part of the things that make things go. And then that's, that's the answer to that question. I could sit back, but I, I can't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> per the bylaws in a vacancy like this, uh, the majority of the board can elect uh, an interested qualified candidate who will serve until the next election. Uh, speaking for myself, it appears we have two uh, very qualified candidates, which in this case is a good problem to have. Um, <laughs> I would hope whichever one is not selected would continue to come and help uh, be part of this organization because I think both have very, very good things to bring to this organization. So I'm fortunate that we have a good problem here because um, I think it is a problem because I'm not sure. Um, both of you, I think, have a lot you can bring here and I appreciate your comments about the accomplishments that we've made the last couple of years and we want to see that go. Um, so, uh, I will entertain a uh, motion if there is one. Yeah, I do have one. Um, and I really appreciate having, we have an emba embarrassment of uh, talents here that could fulfill this seat. Given uh, the fact we are in a, we're in a state of transition, not just from the board, the entire department. I think we're, uh, we're in a very advantageous position having who I consider to be an excellent chief with great visions, and we need a very unified board ready to move, be creative with him, and support him in those visions. Given that, and given the, um, the past experience of having Stan served on the Elk Creek Board, uh, which would delay the learning curve needed because we're in a movement mode, and also given his vast experience uh, on boards, and now president, um, the board of directors of the Conifer Area Chamber of Commerce, which I think is very important for us because one of our chief priorities is public outreach, business outreach to the Conifer community, that um, I would like to nominate, I would like to move to nominate Stan Fox as a director of the Elk Creek Fire District Board. Is there a second? Second. The motion is made and second. Uh, discussion on the motion? Alec, no, would you like to? I'd yes. like both of them. <laughs> Maybe we could expand the board. Yeah, could <laughs> yeah. I think both gentlemen have, you know, interesting perspectives on, on what we have to do. I agree. Um, yes. But uh, I don't think Bob will let us. Somebody else could resign. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Don't, don't give them that option. <laughs> It'll be nice. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> the, uh, that was quick. Anything else I would no, no, it's okay. Greg, would you like to comment? Or? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the main thing I wrote down actually was, again, I'm very, very pleased as well. I think we've got great candidates, and, and uh, that's, it is a, it's nice to have a problem like that. To me, the biggest uh, tiebreaker really uh, in a situation like this was uh, we do have to get do a better job as you talked about in communicating and getting the word out as far as especially with the new uh, uh, chief and uh, leadership and so forth the kinds of differences that we are making we are already doing some of that we need to do, do more and I think that's frankly uh, where you can help us uh, perhaps a little bit more with additional connections relationships because of some of the other organizations you're involved with either now or have been in the past. So uh, that's how I see it. Okay. Do you want anything? I've already made the motion. Thank you. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stan, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, I think. appreciate that a lot. Gary, Gary. Uh, anytime you want to give me a word of advice, <laughs> I'll be more than happy give, to give take us it. a word of yeah. advice. <laughs> Yes, Gary, thanks for, thanks for stepping yeah. up.
job. Thank, thank you. And, thank uh, you, Gary. I'm serious about it. If you uh, want to continue to come to meetings, we can sure use some of your, or we well, can reach yeah. out to you for. Start trying to figure out what your mission statement is and how you're going to do MOEs, how you think you want to work, what the big plan is. I'll be happy to help you with that. Uh, great. Uh, we appreciate that. Yeah. We may hold you to that. Yeah. Uh, we will be careful with that. <laughs> I said I'm just down the road from you here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, come on up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. And then Mr. Leo Fox, raise your hand. Yes, sir. Hi. 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 Stan Fox. Will faithfully support the Constitution. Will faithfully support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the state of Colorado. And the state of Colorado. And the laws made pursuant thereto. And the laws made pursuant thereto. And will faithfully perform. Faithfully perform the duties of the office. The duties of the office of director. Of director of the Oak Creek Fire Protection District. Of the Oak Creek Fire Protection District. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> what have you got me into? <laughs> yes. My pleasure. Okay, you can take a seat right next to the dock. We'll have some paperwork and some things we'll do with you at uh, the uh, conclusion of the meeting. All right. Um, new business, the 2011 audit report. Uh, we have had a uh, discussion with the auditor about this, but they've been rather late in getting the report to us. Final uh, draft report. In fact, it was only given to us uh, today. Um, I've had some questions. The Chief Marie and I went down and met with the auditors and raised some questions with them. I think we have additional questions about uh, the audit. And before I recommend to the board that it be approved, I think we need to look at it further. The law provides that we can request an up to 60 day extension of the July 31st deadline uh, simply by emailing them a form, which I have here. I've talked to the state and they said, fine, just, just email it over. So therefore, I would like to uh, uh, recommend that we do that, that we uh, request a 60-day uh, extension for filing the audit, and uh, that I'm hoping that uh, between now and the next meeting, we can get whatever we need to get squared away. And, probably present it to everybody, and also, of course, get it to you in advance, so you have time to, to look it over. Um, and so I uh, uh, probably make a motion that we file uh, uh, a request for an extension of time to file the audit with the state uh, for 60 days. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Anything else on the audit? Tabor election? Um, you just need to address the issue of whether or not you um, are going to submit um, a foreign election coming up this November. And the deadline to notify the counties is uh, July 27th. Cool. Is that right? Am I correct? I believe that's right. So this would be this would be for a bond issue or a belt levy or something like that. Correct. Perhaps uh, Mr. That, that's the purpose. Right, pretty much any financial, so increase bill levy, saving your special debt, and also the other issue that we have is I don't for myself, I don't see us doing that. No, I don't I don't think we can feasibly do it at this point. Chief? I would recommend against one of the, we really need to have a better idea of, you know, uh, where we're going, what we, you know, what we need to do, and, and what our financial situation is before we make any decision on asking the <coughs> public for any additional yes. funds. And not only that, the community has to know why. Absolutely. And, and they have to understand it, and they have to buy into it. And July 27th, 
July 27th is just your notification, the date that you need yeah, to notify the county. November will, will, will not November. November. It's a major educational effort. Yep. Yep. I think we've all agreed, knowing we have one of the lowest mills in the state, especially for the level of service you get in the district. At some point, you're, but I also agree, and I think Gary touched on it too, you have to have a crystal clear message of what it's going to cost and what you're going to get for it and when it ends. Um, and that message has got to be clear and concise, and there's going to have to be a good, big campaign put out there. So there's, it's way too simple. Right? We need to be that. <clears throat> so I, I agree. I don't think uh, no better is it's too simple. Anyone else on this? Bob, we need a motion for that. Or? Hmm? I don't think we need to make a motion, do we? Dr. Wisniewski asked me what I thought. I do think with the execution of a motion would probably be in order. Well, well we don't or need, is it necessary just we to don't need a motion we're not because we're not doing it. Right. 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 You are going to fill out a form that says yes or no. That's the only reason. So the record will just show it was discussed and we're taking no action. Perfect. Okay. Um, any other new business from the board? Any other business to be brought from the board? Curious about your uh, state of planning for a new station. Uh, I think that that is going to be something that we are going to need to address in uh, in the whole process of the level of service. Um, you know, there are a number of factors that uh, that we will need to look at, uh, including doing an analysis of uh, what kind of response times we have to different areas. Uh, where our uh, call volumes are, and um, you know where, where and when we would uh, see needing uh, additional facilities in the future, if that if that did come out of that analysis. I've seen a uh, a location in print of there, Black Mountain and Sullivan. Yeah, there, like that. Um, there there is some uh, you know that that would be uh, probably the highest uh, priority uh, moving ahead. You know, there are areas out there that, for one thing, are beyond the, the five-mile uh, road uh, limitation that uh, you know grants the you know higher or uh, better insurance rates. Like my house. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it takes us a while to get out there. I mean, it, it, I think that uh, that analysis will point to that area, particularly because uh, you know we've got you know two stations. Three stations along the corridor, one up on Conifer Mountain, but we don't have anything in the north end of the district. And uh, I think that we will see a need for that. And you know, th there was some planning done for that in the past. However, uh, you know, addressing the cost and you know, kind of uh, whether the cost-benefit analysis of, of getting it in there is going to be a big thing. And I think that uh, you know, probably the biggest thing is uh, is going to be looking at. Um, Really, that financial impact. Sure. That's fine. I, I just well, and to give you a little background, I, mean, I think you're aware of some of this. We've had a lot of, I guess, turmoil and a lot of uh, changeover. Yeah, I've been kind of watching the sidelines. Uh, yeah, the board. <laughs> to, and now we have some continuity on the board. Now we have a new. We did our, our uh, chief search, uh, and in our questioning, as you can see from board members, um, we realize there's got to be some short, some long-range planning. That needs to take place. And we need that continuity. Um, probably in the last year or so, the board has kind of gotten behind direction, the unanimous recommendation to hire this chief. Uh, we put it to him with some of the financial problems here and some of the planning issues. Uh, we're all aware of it, and that, and I think I can speak for uh, my colleagues here. That's one of our main goals to start to get that back on track. We've been around enough to know uh, with our funding level and everything. Uh, for ultimate, you know, we're going to need some more funding, which is why we make a lot of the statements we do when we're, when we're interviewing the candidates for this board, because we recognize that. Um, however, uh, we also know that, that we're going to have to do some planning in case we can't increase the revenue. So uh, there are a lot of things to look at. There were studies we've done before that, that we have access to, and that is one of our main goals when we get this board together now, start to address short and long-term. Sure. Well, so we're getting there. 
Um, any other business before the board? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourned. Aye.